Hey everyone, it is a gloomy, chilly morning in New York City today. And the mornings are a little cold and it gets a little cold again in the evening. It still gets pretty warm during midday. But plants are still doing okay. My front yard garden is not facing, and at this time, with the lower, the sun is a little lower, it goes behind my beauty, and then I lose sun about 1 p.m. ish by now. So the garden is growing really slow. But I want to show you guys. So it still looks very nice and lush green. Starting this garden over here, I have my herbs. They're not looking very well, very good. The sage is okay, but rosemary is okay too. I, I trimmed pretty heavily. You can see that it's all cut. Because I made fire cider and I wanted to put some there and also added some stocks that I made. And the time is not looking super good. So I'm going to trim this and give it, see if it would come back to life. This soil, it's actually not doing good, not looking super good either. It gets dried really fast even after I water. So I might have to amend this and put some compost in here too. Or I might even take this and put it in the raised beds or in that green stock. I don't know yet what I'm going to do. It's just an update that... This is not the ideal situation for these herbs in here, especially because they're perennials and they'll come back next year too. The little shiso here that was a volunteer, both of them, I just had this pot and then a shiso plant grew and a pepper plant grew and I kind of let in here to see what goes. But I'm going to harvest this shiso because I want to dry it and use for during the winter. It is delicious. I love the flavor of it. And it's supposed to have a lot of health benefits too. And this is my sweet potato that I used to leave in that shelf up there but I put it in here because it's turning yellow I thought it was not getting too much sun and this is late for sweet potato I acknowledge that I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not but it's looking really pretty with this vine and I was just learning about growing sweet potatoes too so just we'll see I want to see how long this will last until the frost comes this lemongrass is kind of getting wild I'm gonna cut it back down and lem lemon verbena not doing really good too I think I need to amend the soil I absolutely love the smell of lemon verbena I think it's one of my favorite fragrances in the whole world so I really love it I wish I could make more things with it but mine didn't grow super big this year and I went to the farmers market to pick up <laughs> my CSA box and I got all of this uh, I got this beautiful variegated thyme and variegated sage I plan to put them in my green stock so they'll if they die back this winter they'll come back next year and I have not have not gotten a chance to actually take these amaranths they're not growing if you notice that is it the same size that they were last video it's because there's no nutrients in the soil so they're just kind of stagnant right now but I'm planning to try to use them for microgreens and here's the okra in that big pot there's two okras growing here I think there's a little baby okra under this yeah, the flower there that got pollinated. This is beautiful hibiscus-like flower. I think I have said that here in the videos before, but okra is in the hibiscus family. So its flower looks like a hibiscus. Growing next to my beautiful zinnias. They're not as big anymore as it was as they were over the summer. They're trying to they started to put smaller blooms, which make me think that the soil needs some amendment too. And green stock, this peppers decided to go in the second wind and I have a lot of peppers and some flowers going here this is scotch bonnet yellow and let's see if I could go back and if not I'll just if we have a risk of frost I'll just harvest them kale growing very nicely here there's another one there behind that I can reach this mint look at that how crazy cut I need to harvest all of this peppermint but the parsley grew back after the caterpillars stopped eating it. I can't see any caterpillars anymore. Neither my those are the I had the swallowtail caterpillars in them. Then the parsley and the carrots, but they're all growing back. I assume they all became butterflies and went somewhere else. But some nasturtium here kind of been stagnant too. This hasn't been growing much, but this beautiful purple kale has. They're going slow because it's sunlight. This guy here, I harvested seeds from a kale that I had last year. I have a video on how I harvested seeds from it too. And if you want to see the progress, it used to live right here in a pot and I had through the spring I showed going to flower and how the pots look like. So if you go to my early garden tours, you can check it out, the parent plant of this beautiful purple kale here. Lavender, I harvested because I love lavender, so it was flowering. I harvested to dry the flowers that are inside my house right now. And the peppers also here kind of got producing a second wave. I don't know, a second or how many 
another way because it produced a lot for the summer more here with more flowers this is the chinese five color pepper it turns it starts purple then goes for cream yellow orange then red and this is shishito needs to be harvested i mix i miss this one i got i harvested the other day but I definitely missed this guy and back there oh, i planted some of the seedlings i talked about in the last video here in the rice beds but they're not doing really good and the bugs are getting them i planted one here in this spot and it's so much bigger than the ones there so i need to probably add it's hard for me to add compost because i have all this all this stuff growing over here peas and so i was thinking that i might fertilize it even though i didn't do much this year my maybe it was my fault my bad i shouldn't have added i'm gonna do the fish and seaweed in motion in here and see if those guys will get it could also be shade because there's bigger plants here but i'm not really sure but they're definitely not growing as fast as this guy but this guy got attacked by this i can see it right now I just picked one out yesterday and there's another one today this is a cabbage worm they call but let me see if there's any eggs in there i can't see any eggs but there's little yellow long eggs and then they hatch into these guys I don't like them, so this is one of the only things that I actually kill in my garden because... Oh, there's another one here. Oh my gosh, and another one there. Okay, infested. Because if they don't... They really get my grass because that happened last um, fall too. It's really sad, so I'm going to take a minute to squish them. Or I'm just... If I had chickens, I would feed to the chickens, but I don't have them. So or birds sometimes come in either if I throw them in the ground. I feel really bad, but otherwise I won't have any crops to enjoy in the fall especially my brassicas they really get to my brassicas see those little green things they're actually is their poop so I, I got rid of them and put them in my compost i feel bad doing that but i really want to see if this flower will make it the best way to prevent them is to cover the crops so the moths don't come and land and put the eggs in the leaves all right going back here i'd have that squash Father you do as you can see there's white spots in there it's a disease I covered this sock because the squirrels trying to nibble into it this leak is huge here I'm gonna harvest it soon and I might harvest this basil today too there's an okra red okra growing right there this plant has been very productive has uh, we got a lot of okra from there there's another green one here i am from brazil from the northeast and i love eating okra we i grew up eating a lot of it when i was a kid and i really like it so i'm planting quite a few in my garden and i'm very happy with the harvest i have had and there's some dead plant here it's setting some buds again i don't think we're gonna have enough time to get another round of fruit even though is that a little pollinated oh that's cute Okay, so this guy, I think, got pollinated, so I might have one fruit here. And let's see, oh, it's a cucumber there. Let's, let me just, it's a cucumber in there. When you get close to the garden, you see many things. Lots of tomatillos. My tomatillos really are, look at this, looking like these pretty little lanterns. So much of them. But they kind of start, I don't know if that happens to everyone, because never planted them before. They kind of start small, and then, like, you can squish the thing. And then, then they fill it up. I don't know if that's normal, but it's the first time planting tomatillos. And I thought that was interesting. There's a lot of bees in here. Just saw one flying by. They're still working on those flowers. And I just feel some drizzle. So my rain, so I'm going to speed up here. Dino kale, it's growing really good. I'm very happy because now this can probably go through um, a good part, maybe to December, because they can handle pretty cold temperatures. And this guy is really taking off now in the cooler weather. There's some more eggplant in here that has new eggplant that's gonna get big big i harvested a bunch of the my poblanos and there's a lot more still to harvest it was small when i harvest the first batch but they're definitely getting there so i'm gonna have a second wave of poblanos and i feel I, this part of my garden is so crowded but everything is growing well so I'm kind of in, i don't know a little impressed i have my squash here let's take a look also covered look how beautiful this guy looks it's a honey-knit squash, beautiful color, very hard to do with one hand, but I'm gonna harvest it soon to discover otherwise. The squirrels ate all of my other ones, they're so bad. This is the last one, on this vine, I think the one on that vine, that's the last one standing. I'll look for one in a minute. 
it's not a tomato in here. They're going everywhere, taking over. Lots of flowers in this squash too. There's another one there. And this is my beautiful zinnias here. I love this. It's called the wine, giant red wine zinnias. And there's some in the pot here. My puma peppers are setting up more fruit. I just, in one of my last videos, I harvested almost everything that was here. Look, look at that. There's a lot of new ones. It's full of flowers. Now it's setting a lot of fruit. And they look quite big. So they'll probably be, go a little bit bigger in, before the frost comes and this nasturtium and this green stalk it's really it's so beautiful it's variegated it's really kind of taking over all right so it's raining i'm gonna have to speed this up here this is the back part of the green stalk that had my lettuces that i planted they did grow but not as much as i wish they had by the time that i planted them this is the one i planted from seed it's growing a little bit more bok choy who's also getting a little bit so I gotta be careful because those little cabbage worms, they eat my bok choy too. Sometimes in the green stock they're more protected. The little purple ones didn't really grow much. But look at this eggplant here. I turned my green stock and this guy is so big in the green stock. So bumblebee, let me see if I live. There's one eggplant here that's growing. They're growing slow too because of the sun and maybe nutrients I might have to fertilize. Another eggplant here and another eggplant there and let me see below here. I have said a few the other day too, so I can't uh, find any more. Planted those beets over here. Harvested the carrots that I had and put some beets in its place. There is a little overview of this side. Little messy composting area in there that I always say that I'm gonna get to it, but I just keep throwing my plants crops in here. And this guy just growing like crazy, and I can see it's setting some buds. It was like, when had, we had this squash in here, this was just a little tiny thing that didn't think would make it. I even forgot that there was some seeds in here. Now it's just gorgeous. Back here, some borage that I was drying. Um, it was to grow here, drop some seeds. There's some new borage growing. That kale was from my kale that was hanging here to dry. But I don't think there's any nutrients in the soil because they haven't really grown more than that yet. So I probably have to amend it. But since it just happened, I kind of keep forgetting about it. And look at that. It's, pepper over there in the pepper plant too so I'm gonna have to postpone the harvesting since it's raining oh look at this bee in the we the love the zinnias if you want to pack bees and butterflies to your garden the zinnias do a very good job on that especially these bigger varieties I just took my experience that's what happened to my garden also I just want to mention that I have been posting a bit of shorter videos in my last updates just to make sure that I gave updates to you guys but it's been a little bit hard to find time to do the more longer detailed videos. Today I want to do that. Also we're going to go to the plot garden even though I said in my last video that I was when I with the plot maintenance one that I was not going to go there anymore that I was going to only do videos here from my front yard. I talked to my neighbor and we decided to do something for fall there so just hang on to the end of this video and you see what we're gonna do and but going back to why I haven't been posting a little bit of longer content it's because I have also actually started a professional permacultural design course by the University of Oregon and I'm very excited about it so I'm learning a lot already and but that's taking a lot of my time um, if you don't know what permaculture is you can think of it as an ecological design so we use obviously we use like we observe and try to use the patterns of nature to create healthy ecosystems so even though i'm here in the middle of the city i kind of use some of its principles to build my garden over the summer i mentioned in one of my very early videos that i read a book uh, called gaia's garden excellent book it's very good it's good for beginners and it's about home skill permaculture so that's the one that got me into permaculture i like it so much and saw how good my garden did. that I actually looked for a professional course so many people that walk by here ask me like how did you do this how are you able to have this garden in the north facing front yard in the middle of this busy avenue in here and then i want to be able to help more people to to build gardens in New York so I am actually designing my whole building but there are two rooftops on top here plus a backyard and then I'm gonna try to make a design for all of them so I do get experience to design different spaces not in my front yard and also the plot garden so that's pretty exciting but that's 
what I have to put a lot of my time into. I'm very excited by the course. I'm learning a ton. I don't like to promise that I'm gonna make videos anymore because I always get busy and it's hard for me. But I would try maybe over this winter to try to share what I'm learning with permaculture too and how I'm thinking to implement this design in this plot. Obviously, when I have it out on paper and everything, I'm gonna share with everyone. And I'm planning to implement the design next year in spring, so that's gonna be exciting. All right, let's get going here. The plot gardens is about a block away from my house and there's just some cool Halloween decor on the block. I'm gonna show you guys some of it. trees are just starting to change here in New York City but at least in Queens where I am at the lots, most of them are still green the turn has just started right now still looks I think in like next two weeks everything is probably already going to be all yellow and orange and if you're new here I this plot garden actually belongs to my neighbor and I help him managing it. Um, last time I posted a video with an update, I just came here and did a big cleanup just here on the side right now. We took a lot of the weeds out and a lot of the dead uh, vines and plants. There's a lot of vines, you can see from out here, still on board. And we just drew everything in here in this composting area, compost pile area. But let me go get, let me go inside now. Okay, I'm inside now, and this is just a quick update on how the pot's looking. So, as you can see, a lot of things are cleared. I showed that in the last video, but lots of weeds are growing already in some areas. There's some volunteer beans in here. My neighbor did throw some broccoli seeds in here too to see if it would over winter, I don't know, it's kind of late, but they wanted to try some peppers here. It rained yesterday, so I thought it would be, they look nice, but they're looking a little sad. So what we decided to do here, after talking to my neighbor, we are going to, and I am going to plant a cover crop, and here in this bed and that bed over there, I have a lot of some pea seeds that I got from Dennis' friend that used to own a microgreen farm. So peas are also nitrogen fixers and I'm going to plant them in here. They're obviously not going to mature, but the intent is so I can plant them. They'll grow a little bit and then when the frost comes, it will kill them. So that would kind of make a layer of mulch and that would be green manure and will feed it for, feed the soil for in the spring and also will suppress the weeds so the weeds won't grow so much next year where all those peas are going to be at. Just seen a video from where we got this place called the Prejudice Beds. I will make sure to make it now below. I tried to plant peas along this and said they never made it, they never grew. So, But other things grew through the summer, so I'm just going to see if they're at least going to sprout this time and germinate. Here are the pea seeds, the thing open in my bag. So I'm going to try to... This is from a microgreen farm. I have no idea what kind of peas they are, but I have grown the microgreens in the tasty. So, just they're not soaked. They don't have time in a tot. It's all right. Maybe I'll put two or three per. They don't really are going to fully develop. They just want to make sure they're under the ground. They're, they get covered with soil after I plant them. And then after this, I'm just going to give a good water watering on it and I believe we're gonna get more rain this week so hopefully that will help too. I am also, since those are all here, going to throw a lot more on top since I still have all of this left and see what happens. I don't want to waste those seeds, but they will feed the soil. So I'm just going to throw a handful on top now. Maybe 
I'm gonna use the garden fork that's in there to try to kind of work them into the soil so <laughs> I'm learning as I go here too I've never planted a cover crop before I mean I can just if it was I have sprinkled seeds everywhere but I just want to make sure these guys are going to germinate since we're running out of time so I'm gonna try to work them with the soil gently and then give a good very good watering Now I kind of just worked around and they look somehow covered, so maybe we'll have a higher chance of germination. So I'm going to show you guys right before I water. I'm going to have to put my camera back there so I don't get my camera wet, but this is how it looks now and hopefully in a couple of weeks you're going to see some sprouts. but I just spotted just grab a couple lemon drop peppers I'm going to be taking this home with me here I'm running out of time now but I'm going to try to come back here later in the week to harvest these marigolds too I'm going to dry them and I'm still doing some reading and learning what they're good for, but I learned that they're edible. These are lemon drop marigolds. I've got a lemon drop pepper and a lemon drop marigold. But some of the seeds are, you can see that they're dry. I want to come and harvest them too. On my last garden tour, I actually showed how to harvest marigold seeds. But I have to come back. Those are looking beautiful, but I, will, I wanted to make sure I harvest them at least before the frost comes. I actually just checked my first frost date again for my permaculture assignment and it has changed and it's now November 16th for our area. It was November 12th last time I checked. So I encourage you to check your dates too. Even though we're gonna get a frost a little later, our winter is supposed to be really cold this year so we're gonna get a lot of snow. At least that's what's forecasted. And it's supposed to be a longer winter so we'll see how spring is gonna be for us. But even though it say it's changed, it's just a chance. I don't know. We have since I've been living here, first year I was here actually we had the snow in October. So it's unpredictable, but I wanna prepare for that and I would at least try to get some of a few things here dried before the frost comes. I really want to harvest this beautiful amaranth too. It's a, I dried some and you can harvest the seeds if you like for grain, but I like to use them, I want to use them for decoration for my house for some winter or fall arrangements, they're beautiful. So I might, I'm going to try to come back here this weekend, I didn't bring any six cheers or anything with me, but I might try to come back here this week and harvest them and dry, to dry them up. Alright everyone, I'm ending this video here, I'm going to try to post an update hopefully soon. Um, probably in a couple of weeks on how these peas are looking, if it's gonna work or not, and if they sprout. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video and you wanna keep seeing what I'm growing here in New York City and how things are gonna go through the winter, I'm going to keep preparing my garden and also I'll try to post some cooking videos in the winter too, once the garden is asleep. So if you want to keep following me in my journey, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also if you like this video, just make sure to hit that like button, it really helps as small creators to get our videos seen by other people that might find it relevant so thank you so much and i'll see you next time